Is it too late to call you right back? I gotta be begging to say I'm off the drink, I'm feeling the vibe Awesome, awesome. Welcome to Temperature Check Thursday, family. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. For those of you who are new to Temp Check, I know we have a lot of new faces, to be completely honest. I know that I have a lot of different names and different that I've never seen before. <clears throat> just so everybody knows, I have been very, very sick. I basically forced myself out of bed today, but you know, Temperature Check call is something that is almost like a promise that I made to myself and something that I, I refuse to to have a cold or anything like stop me from actually doing, you know, like it's something that I look forward to. I plan for this call every single week and, you know, I do everything with love. Like, you know, I plan hard for it with love. And so just bear with me, guys. I'm going to push through this. Um, don't let my face fool you. I put some face on, but I look like a dead person walking right now. But with that being said, guys, Welcome to Temperature Check Thursday. I know that a lot of you are very new to this. I know some of you, it might be your very first day. I see somebody said right here that from mornings with Nano. Okay, yeah, this Monday was a little bit of a, a, a nice little up for my numbers. But welcome to Temperature Check. So the reason I'm from the Temperature Check called, right, where it all came about, it was because myself and Katie were speaking and like, you know, we have a lot of calls uh, throughout the week in our organization where it comes down to like building and it comes down to like, you know, the skill sets and things like that, but the, the technical aspects. But you know, I felt like there wasn't enough being shed upon, attention shed upon like mental health and like just like checking people's temperature, like where you are at throughout the week. You know, I feel like it's on a Thursday. So you're sometimes you might have had a really rough week to begin with. I like to for you to kind of decompress on a Thursday and jump into your weekend with a different type of mindset, you know, a different type of energy. And that's what we're really here for, like to shift energies, even though right now my energy is a little bit, you know, I'm working with it. I'm pushing through it. But here we go. So nonetheless, today I'm just going to go straight into it. The subject for today that I really wanted to cover is rebranding yourself, okay? So I want to get into the whole aspect of rebranding because being at the fact that we're going into um, the new year, right? Everybody usually likes to come up with a new year's resolution. Um, they like to set a, a small goal because in reality, that's really what I think a new year's resolution is summed up. It's a small goal because think about it. It's something that's done almost like out of impulse, if you go to the gym, you know that in January, the gym is completely packed. January, February, you got to wait for, to actually touch a machine. But that's because if you really think about it, by March, people start weaning themselves out. That goal that they put so much thought into, it completely just, it, it kind of just starts like watering down, right? So with that being said, a lot of people like to think of it as like rebranding themselves, like, or that's how I like to think of it. Like it's a, it's a temporary goal whenever it comes down to these New Year's resolutions. But I want to actually make it something that's a lot deeper. I feel like you should be writing resolu these New Year's resolutions on a daily basis. What do I mean by that? It comes with rebranding yourself, right? So I want to get into the action behind rebranding yourself. When you think of a brand, you think of a statement, um, a symbol, maybe even an icon. And a lot of us here are entrepreneurs or on the path to become like on a full blown entrepreneur path, right? So however, it's a really big role to take on. And why? Because you're self-employed, right? So with that comes you being your own brand you become your very own brand and everything you say or do becomes a reflection of who you are so with that comes a lot of pressure but how we protect our brand identity is a simple quality control right so what do i mean by that when a lot of you do know i come from a fashion background so when in fashion we got a piece right it can be it can be a sample and we have to take multiple revisions on the item before mass producing it. So we have to hit the drawing board. On, like, on there is where we create the whole concept for the brand, select the design, put it into sampling, and sampling can take anywhere between three to five different revisions. And then, boom, mass production occurs. So you happen to be the highest quality product that you will ever have to present right? To anybody. So you must hit the drawing board. So you have to really dig deep and be like, what is your niche? 
What is your purpose and why? And what identity are you looking to pour into your people and to other people? Because when you mass produce, that really comes by you mentoring, right? So you see, with that, it, it brings a lot of pressure. But these... Like these are products that are that are gonna these are products of like a, a long-term result. Like where are you now? A lot of people might still be discovering their voice. Some are just figuring out what their niche is, and others haven't even scratched surface, which is okay. With discovering yourself, discovering your brand, it's okay. There really is no deadline as far as, oh, you have to be here by the time of year 25 and you have to buy 30 already knowing you have to be going full force. No. People along the way discover and rediscover and rediscover themselves in like all the time and it happens you know think about it look at how many times my life completely changed like i went from thinking i was gonna be a full-blown fighter to the point that because of health conditions i had to completely revamp myself i had to completely redesign myself i got into a whole different path and you know through trial and error i rediscovered what it was that was going to be a path the right path for me and then here i am now so no i would i didn't just wake up one day and i was like this is where i'm going to be and this is where i'm going to go no like yes i set the intention of it but life happens right so some people might have or especially with covid some people might have had a whole entire career which happened to me as well i was in the fashion world i thought that i had everything all figured out but guess what I had to revamp myself. I had to rebrand myself. And that is okay. Luckily, I found my, I still, I never lost full control of my niche because I still always made it work for me. But there's some people who still haven't even discovered that. But it's a point that, it's a point of actually attacking it and searching for it every single day. And the way that you actually are able to discover what your niche is, is by really spending time with yourself, really digging deep meditation self-discovery a lot of self-discovery comes throughout meditation guys i promise you the moment that i started spending the most time by myself was when i really started to discover what my inner voice was what my inner purpose was what my who i was some it was even like almost like i was inside of me waiting to break free and meditation and constantly feeding and feeding it's almost like working out. You work out every single day, you get results. You feed yourself spiritually every single day and you'll become unstoppable. You might unlock a whole different type of beast, right? So before becoming the person that duplicates and pours into others, we have to dig deep. How many of you honestly evaluate yourself every day? Like, honestly. You sit there and you point out the pros and cons, the should have but didn't, the areas in your in your day that you could have improved, that you didn't do well in, what you need to work on, as in work-wise, self-improvement, all of that. Like how many of you genuinely sit there and evaluate yourself? I'm always in my head, I'll start today, me. Okay, so some of you have and some of you don't right but it's important to actually assess yourself why because i'm not saying that we have to sit there and criticize ourselves daily but we have to get into the habit of not sweeping everything under the rug why because eventually it all shows and the areas that we worked on versus the ones that we never targeted they show so the question is what are you running from when it comes to you because sometimes a lot of us don't really dig into what we did or didn't do or the roots of it or why we didn't move forward with it, why we suppress certain things, why we cut ourselves short. Why? Because we're running from something. What are you running from? When it comes to the reevaluation, what are you running from? Because sometimes these self-assessments, they require forgiveness. All right? They require forgiving yourself for a lot of things. Because before I get into my next point, um, forgiveness within yourself, right? I actually want to do an exercise. This is not planned. I want to do an exercise that I did a very long time ago. Um, I'm going to have everybody see them in a the gallery, okay? I want all of you to put your cameras on. I don't care what you look like right now. I want you all to put your cameras on. All of you, all of you. Unless you're driving, you just absolutely cannot. But I want you all to put your cameras on. And I want you all to put 10 fingers up. If anybody was a part of this call a long time ago, you know exactly what's about to go down. 
10 fingers up, right? And I'm obviously I have all of you guys muted, but I want you guys to put one finger down as you say one thing that you love about yourself. So I only need you to tell me 10 things that you love about yourself, but I want you to put one finger down for each thing that you love about yourself. And I'm gonna give you two minutes to actually do it. So you have until 723, go ahead. 10 things, just 10 things. As you say them out loud, I want you to put one finger down. Only 10 things. I see a lot of you with 10 fingers still up in the air. It's only 10 things about yourself that you love about yourself. Why do some of you still have 10 fingers up? 10 things. Wow, I still have some people with 10 fingers up. Why are you struggling to tell yourself 10 things that you love about yourself? And I'm literally looking at everybody's cameras right now. Those who didn't turn the cameras on, I don't know if you're hiding from something, but only 10 things. I still have one, two, three, four, five. Six people with fingers up. You have one minute left. Harder than I look sometimes, acceptance. Guys, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard for us to actually be able to identify 10 things that we love about ourselves? It's crazy, right? So the first assignment that I want you guys to actually complete is I want you guys to forgive yourself. All right, I want you to forgive yourself for not being able to identify those 10 things. Because sometimes that just goes to show that we can be our biggest critics. Because why is it that it's so hard for us to identify just, just 10 things? Like imagine I had you guys write me a list of 20. You guys should be able to identify 10 things in less than one minute, two minutes. It could be anything simple. I love my hair. I love my I love my uh, my eyes. I love my thought process. I love how smart I am. I love I love how like it's not that it really shouldn't be that hard. So I want you guys to forgive yourself. I need you to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for not being able to identify how great you are. Okay. I need you all. Oh, to the same exact way that you write these New Year's resolutions, I want you to write yourself a letter of forgiveness because after comes the rebranding to enter the new year, okay? We're, because we are going to rebrand ourselves. Resolutions are temporary. We don't do temporary results here. We want long-term, okay? We establish legacies around here. I only talk to legends. I only pour into legends. Why? Because I plan to be a legend. So legends, I want you all to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the goals that you didn't achieve, the ones that, that you never set because you doubted yourself. Forgive yourself for the self-doubt, the comparisons, the times that you looked in the mirror and you depicted 20 to 30 things that, that about yourself that you didn't like, the fact that you struggled to say 10 things that you love about yourself. And then, once you're done apologizing to yourself, because if anybody deserves an apology, it's you, then write to yourself as your future self. I want you to write a whole letter to yourself. Pretend that you're already there. Pretend that you're already that future self that you wanna be, right? Your rebranded self. And the same way that we affirm the things that we want, affirm who you will be. Write a description of what you want to be. What qualities of your personality do you love right there as your future self? What are your assets? Like, what are your hobbies? What are your strong points? What are your weak points? 
And now, once you write that down, meet yourself halfway. Put them into action. Bring that out of you. And get into the habit of being able to identify with feedback. Because when I say evaluate yourself, I mean exactly that, but daily. Not just on New Year's resolution, like I'm going to make a better version of myself. No, because that only lasts two months. You ain't going to do nothing in two months. Like reevaluate yourself and set a resolution daily. Go to sleep and wake up and say, okay, I have goals to achieve today. Because like that, they're not temporary. Every single day you're attacking something else and something else and something else and something else. And then you become great. Don't just be great temporary. Who wants to do that? Temporary results? That's whack. So what did you do wrong? When you evaluate yourself, I want you to ask yourself, what did you do wrong? Okay, how could you have done that better? What did you talk yourself out of doing? Okay, and then ask yourself, how will you overcome that fear in the future? There's a root to everything that we do and don't do. And family, sometimes it comes from traumas, past traumas, but traumas only exist for as long as you allow them to. Oh no, I can't do that because last time I did that, I failed. Okay, and why did you fail? What mental state were you in back then? How did failing make you feel? What could you have done better? Analyze that and then fucking do it. If you fail, again, reevaluate all over and do it again don't just sweep it under the rug that's that's a weakness failing is not a weakness you're only weak when you stop fighting okay you're only weak when you stop fighting you're only weak when you stop swinging yeah you might you might swing with a lot less strength but guess what you're still swinging you're only weak and lose a fight when you stop fighting so don't just sweep it under the rug. And for everything that you did sweep under the rug in the past, forgive yourself. Reevaluate it. And you either move past it, but you move past it in peace, or you revisit it. Why did I never get that part? Why did I never finish that project I started? Was it because I didn't believe in myself? Okay, let me revisit that. Some things, maybe you face something in... And you maybe when you maybe when you face something that you gave up on, you lack the maturity that you have today to actually achieve it. That's okay. But because we're not perfect, it hurts. Yes, it hurts, but so does the like KD told me the other day. It hurts, but so does alcohol when you put it on an open wound. But guess what? You have to put the alcohol on there to disinfect it, to allow it to heal properly. Also, ask yourself, did you really fail or did you fail in comparison to something or someone else? Because unfortunately, we live in such a superficial world where comparisons determine if we achieved or failed. I'm sorry to tell you, it's like smoke and mirrors. Like when in reality, more times than not, you are exactly who you've been looking for. Guys, sometimes a lot of us are like, oh, I wish I could be more like this person. This person has these traits. Oh, this person's so successful because they have this and this and this and that. Remember, people only show you what they want you to see. So you're comparing yourself to something that is not even real, something that's superficial, something that is not real, okay? And a lot of times, guys, you are exactly what you've been looking for. You just haven't unlocked it yet. You just haven't given yourself the opportunity to yet. You just haven't fed the right portions of you. You haven't given yourself the certain parts of yourself the right amount of time to unlock it. But really, all along, you are exactly what you've been looking for. Because that empty feeling that you have in your chest, that feeling that something is missing, the only reason that you have it is because you're still searching for something that you think you need. Treat yourself like someone that you actually loved. Sometimes those flaws that we, like, we're so hard on ourselves for, they're not flaws. They're a reflection of the doubts or what you consider to be imperfection. But I need you to right now say it out loud. 
I am who I've been looking for. And I need you to say it. Like, I need you guys to actually say this word, like word for word. I am who I've been looking for. And say it, but put your hand on your chest so you can feel it. Because when you feel words, it actually becomes that much more real. When you feel money, it, it feels real. Like it's yours. You feel like it's yours. Put your hand on your chest and say those words. I am who I've been looking for. Feel that. That's how real it is. And now, forgive yourself. Because a person who can't forgive anything is a person who is destroyed psychologically and emotionally. And most people run around empty. Don't be that. Be a working progress every single day. Give up the hope that the past, the, give up, give up the hope that the past um, could be any different. Like it's not accepting that it, that it was okay to happen to you. It's accepting that it has happened to you and not holding on, not wishing that you were in better control. It's not a, oh, I should have, I could have, I didn't. No, it's not that. Like forgive yourself, let go of certain things. A lot of y'all carry a lot of extra baggage for no reason. Like, and then you wonder why you can't move forward. Look at all the baggage you got. Oh, I never did. I should have. I could have. I never. No, shut up. Like, let go of that. That's how you achieve the next level of being a better person. Do not let your past hold you prisoner. Do not allow it to hold you hostage because your past will, like, your, your past could, your past could have been earlier today. Two o'clock in the afternoon, that's considered the past. But the power of daily evaluation is what put it like this if they say that your past your past don't let your past hold you prisoner right if you evaluate yourself daily that means that you're not going to be dragging that that means that you that you yourself are allowing yourself to not be a prisoner of your past because you're assessing it you're facing it you're confronting it and then from there you're actually healing from it so are you going to allow yourself to serve a life sentence as a prisoner or are you going to just, what's, what's easier? Bail yourself out the same day. <laughs> like, what's less painful? You have control over it. You have full control over your life. So forgive yourself daily and do not let your past hold you prisoner. Because whatever experience that, you, that you're having right now, it's not to say. It literally is to pass. This too shall pass. I literally got that tattooed on my arm. This too shall pass. Put it into perspective. Let it go. Shit happens. Move on so you can grow. And it doesn't matter what happened to you. Like, it doesn't matter what happened to you. What are you going to do about it? Because you are in charge, family. So being not where you want to be starts with being who you want to be, right? What's going to kill your dream? Like, what's going to kill your dream is your approval from other people. Stop giving other people power. I need you all to rewrite your story, the whole narrative. Rewrite it. Enter enter this new year with the game plan already. So rewrite your narrative. This is your story. You are your brand. And sometimes, like, someone else doesn't like it. Guess what? Who cares? They should be focusing on their damn branding. This is your brand. What you do, what you do and don't do for your brand reflects. No one's gonna go buy a pair of dingy forces from from like. Are you gonna pay top dollar for a pair of dingy forces? No. So it's your brand. What are you gonna put yourself? What are you putting forward? What are you selling? But we need to take charge and and with power because this is all a part of just showing up for yourself, family. We don't have a story to sell. We have a story to tell. So in order for something to sell, it has to be intact, fully packaged, in a box, perfect. But who wants to be that? Like, who wants to be that? Who wants to be a little Barbie, a little Ken packaged up? Nobody. That's not the type of branding that I want for me, at least. So your story is for you to tell. And the right person will be, will be inspired. But before you stand in front of everyone to tell your story, you have to hit the drawing board. Take control of what you were, what you were up until today. 
So I need you all to literally tonight before you go to bed. I don't know if any of you journal, but if you do not, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend for you to journal. Take a reflect up until today. Who was Marcy up until today? Who was Anissa up until today? Who was Cedric up until today? Who was Kimberly up until today? Don't wait until the new year resolution. Who were you up until today? Because I need you to take full control of your life. Hit the drawing board. Take control of who you were up until today and design your future. And give yourself room to mess up. Okay? You're not going to get it right the first shot. And that's okay. You might have three, four, five, maybe ten revisions. But revise. And how do we revise? We evaluate. And then we adjust. With no comparison, but the standard that you select for you and your brand. And once you, you're done with the revisions, mass produce. Because your legendary story is meant to inspire. Stop cutting yourself short. Stop cutting yourself short to comparisons. Because when you die, people, are, people are, who are so obsessed with what other people think about them never really fully discover their full potential. So fulfill you. Revamp your branding, but for your purposes. Because not for who you're gonna who you're gonna impress, who's gonna who's gonna buy into you. No, do it for yourself. Because then that that's when you'll be able to contribute to others. An empty cup won't pour or fill another empty cup. So before we go, I want you all to repeat after me. Like, I want you literally to write this down and say it in the mirror when you wake up tomorrow, before you go to bed today. I want you to say it up until every single day. Like, up until you actually get to where you want to be, I want you to actually say these words. I am enough. I control what I achieve. I have control of me. I am a legend. I am a legend. I told you guys last time that you're either a winner, a champion, or a legend. I only pour into legends. Everybody on my team are legends. I attract legends because I am a legend. All of you guys are legends and you all have the potential to discover that, to unlock that. So push yourself. Literally, I'm gonna write it in the chat box. I am enough. I want you guys to write this down and literally write it down. I control what I achieve. I have control of me. I am a legend. Who's going to revamp themselves? Because the next time that you guys actually come onto this call and I do this whole little put your put your 10 fingers up, I'm going to give you one minute. I'm not going to give you three. That was way too far. And you know what? You know what's crazy? The first time I ever did that whole little challenge thing, I gave people two minutes. And two minutes didn't seem like enough time. I was like, you know what? Maybe, I, uh, maybe people can't talk too fast in two minutes, right? And I sat here and I watched everybody and I'm like, wow okay maybe i should give them another minute but i wasn't gonna say that i'm like i'm gonna revisit this one day later on right and i did it today i gave y'all three minutes and i still have people with hands up i have people that pop that i don't know if they had their they didn't turn their cameras on because they were doing something i don't know if they didn't turn their cameras on because they knew they weren't gonna be able to face me they would know that they were gonna be able to say 10 things but those of you who are bold enough to turn your cameras on and stay here and say 10 things that you loved about yourself I give that to you. The ones that admitted that it wasn't easy, I give it to you too. Because you're acknowledging the fact that you're going to have to dig deeper. And I'm going to force that upon every single person. Because family, there was a long time in my life where before I rebranded myself, I was lost. I was a lost individual. I had no idea, no sense of direction. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know who I was going to be. I was just lost, a lost soul. And it took a lot of digging deep. It took a lot of time by myself. Guys, it was so bad that I was I would not spend time by myself. I would be on the phone 24-7, like just on the phone talking to somebody because... I didn't realize how much I was running for myself. I didn't realize how much I depended on other people's companion to feel validated. And that's when I really 
it, that's when I hit a really scary point in my life because I'm like, wow. So if people aren't telling me how much fun I am, people aren't, if, I, if I'm not making people laugh, if I'm not making people feel like it was to the point that I realized that I just, I was empty and I was attempting to pour into other people from an empty glass. And it's like, I was making other people feel good, but I would go home and still be depressed. And it didn't make sense. And that's when I really had to sit there and dig deep. And I had to assess. I had to evaluate. I had to write down. I, guys, when I tell you write a letter of apology for yourself, I mean it. That was a game changer for me. Because you know what? Before you forgive somebody else that might have hurt you at some point in your life, you forgive yourself first. And you forgive yourself for the fact that you allowed that to hurt you. You allowed, uh, forgive yourself for allowing yourself to hold on to that for a very long time. You have to. Who gives a shit if you forgive the other person or not? It doesn't matter. I'm not here for that. I'm not telling you to, to make peace with the whole entire world. But when you make peace with yourself, everything else follows. You put yourself in a good place with yourself. You find yourself. You discover yourself. The rebranding, the reason why I came about with this is because the other day I was actually, I was giving a, a almost like a, a training on speaking with, um, with posture right? And when I was speaking, when somebody asked me at the very end, they're like, how did you rebrand yourself? Like your brand, like you seem like you're someone that's, you know, you know that it's you, you know, when Marcy is speaking, you know, when Marcy said something, like, how did you discover that? How did you discover your voice? The answer to that is that I was so lost for so long in such a dark place that I had no choice but to show up for Marcy. Because how was Marcy going to show up for anybody else? I had no choice but to show up for myself. I had no choice but to find myself. I had to dig deep. That's why I tell you all, dig deep and find the root. And that's how you discover who you are. That's how you discover your voice. That's how you discover your strength and your purpose. And then you're able to pour into other people. But you have to heal first. So the New Year's resolution stuff, guys, that's temporary. And it actually pisses me off when people are like, New Year, new me. No, because you go back to the same stuff that you do. New Year, new me, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to get right. Like, no, because too much, because you're eating like crap the whole entire holidays up until New Year's because you're going to give yourself all this time to fuck up. And then you're going to hit the New Year's and then you're going to start brand new and you're going to hit your resolution. No, you know, you sound like you sound like a clown. Because you're excusing yourself, you're going to allow yourself to continue running from something so you can then run full force for a short period of time. That's fake. That's superficial. Are you dumb? <laughs> D, <laughs> I always say that, guys, and I really don't mean it offensively, but I... <laughs> wow. My point is, guys, you are, have full control over who you are. You have full control over who you become. And I'm just here along the way to remind you guys on Thursdays that pouring yourself pouring a little bit of more into yourself than anybody else first is okay so if you got any type of value from tonight's call please drop a fire emoji in the chat Thank you to everybody that was a new face today, guys. Honestly, thank you. I love it. I love it. I know Mornings with Neno this Monday brought a lot of people in. And I'm honestly blessed and happy to have all of you here. I will be here each and every single Thursday. Uh, if you missed any of the previous sessions, I do have it on YouTube. I do have a YouTube account. Let me go ahead and drop that in here so you guys can visit my channel. If you already are in the Telegram chat, then you have access to all the recordings as well. But this is my YouTube channel family. This is my social media, my Instagram. Once again, thank you every single person. Oh, yes. And then the, the journal, the guided journals as well. These are actually key, very essential to what I actually apply to myself every single night. Every single night I do a, a nighttime routine where I decompress and I reevaluate everything about my day and reassess myself. Um, that does come into play with those journals. Very big thing. The, it's like the AM, PM journal. But with that being said, family, thank you so much for tuning in today. I look forward to see you guys each and every single Thursday. God bless you all. I'm grateful for you all. And remember, you guys are enough. Love you all. Thank you, family.